Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the ARX-160 Assault Rifle. It's going to be a slightly shorter episode than usual because, well, there's something ridiculously broken about this gun that I'm going to show you that's going to sum up pretty much the whole episode, but we're going to get to that when the time comes. The gameplay that you're going to get to see is me using the weapon on, De on Detroit, playing Momentum, doing the absolute best that I can do, but unfortunately I don't feel that it's a very excellent weapon and my gameplay is probably mediocre at best, but we'll get to what's wrong with this weapon in just a second. First off, I want to talk to you about its damage. It will deal 35 to 20 damage per shot, that's 35 in close quarters combat, but it will pretty rapidly drop off to 20, so it will be a 5 shot kill at a distance, or 3 shots to kill up close. It can one burst people up close, but oftentimes you're going to need 2 or 3 bursts to kill if you miss a shot or two. Headshots will deal 1.1x bonus damage like most of the other assault rifles, unfortunately, this really isn't going to change your shots to kill kill very much at most ranges due to just kind of how that damage profile works. And uh, this, this is where things get crazy. I was testing out the range on the ARX and uh, trying to see just how low the range was and I was thinking surely I can kill somebody in one burst at this range, right? I can just shoot him and he'll, and he'll die? I mean this, what? This is like shotgun range, this is like pistol range and it still won't kill you in one burst. I have to get this close to somebody to get a kill with one burst. Everything else is going to be two bursts, so it has the proper amounts of damage, but the range is just absolutely mind-bogglingly pitiful on this weapon. I don't even... I, I just can't even right now. I'm just looking at that body. I can't even think straight. We tried it again with the shotgun, and what you can see is that at ranges where the weapon does not get a one burst kill, I, I, I don't get the kill with the shotgun, but T-Max shoots me with the exact same shotgun. There's a little bit of randomness to the pellet spread, but you can get one-shot shotgun kills at ranges greater than this weapon can get burst kills. Yeah, there he is. He shot me. He just got a better pellet spread for whatever reason. It's not super likely or probable, but in all honesty, the shotguns have a range advantage on the ARX-160 assault rifle, which just kind of baffles me and makes me not want to spend a whole lot of time and attention on this gun because there's a reason that people don't use it and that's the reason. The rest of the in-depth episode is going to move at hyper speed so here we go. Rate of fire is 800 RPM with a burst delay of 1.67 seconds. That's about 10 frames of burst delay or about one-sixth of a second. The rate of fire is actually a little bit high for assault rifles and I have a feeling it's actually shooting somewhat faster than that but due to frame rounding my best estimation is 800 RPM. The recoil is extremely low and even lower with the grip. I wouldn't say that you're going to need a foregrip due to how little this weapon kicks. However again no matter how low the recoil is if you have to put burst after burst after burst in them to kill them because the range is so bad it's not really going to matter. Hip fire is exceptionally poor because for reasons that I just showed you unless you're just point blank barrel stuffing range you're going to need to get a lot of shots to kill with hip fire and that's really not ideal on a burst fire weapon because it's shooting so slowly. Iron sights are a bit clunky they're not ideal I pretty much never use the weapon without optics and it's it's gonna be a pretty grind pretty big grind until you do get opti optics. Reloads a little bit on the swift side of thing the fast reload is 1.2 seconds slow reload 1.7 seconds not really fast just slightly. Uh, raise and drop times are pretty average 1.2 seconds to raise and 0.52 seconds to drop pretty steady standard there. Run speed is 90%, that's the same as all the other assault rifles. The best variants, again these are ones that I have not unlocked because it's very difficult to unlock and test all variants for all weapons, matter of fact it's probably impossible because you can't carry them all in your armory, are the Steel Bite, Heavy Barrel, and Tactical. All of these are ones that either increase damage or range with minimal penalties to handling mobility or something like that, or maybe three on the damage and one to range, which isn't going to hurt you too bad, or they come with an attachment, something. These are just something to pump up the range or damage vari variables. And when it comes to my recommendations on this gun, I would recommend that you don't use it at all. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you when I say that I try very hard to use all guns to find the niche in which all guns perform and do well and they do something at, but this gun is pretty much outclassed by every single assault rifle, both in terms of time to kill and overall practicality. Even I, even if you don't like it because it's burst fire, the IMR is a better burst fire weapon. The H bar is better in time to kill. With I mean, in, in, bearing in mind, I mean, if you're really close range and you never ever miss and use it like a shotgun, maybe. But then shotguns are better than this gun. It's just really not ideal. I would tell you not to use it at all. And if you do want to use it, if you want the camo challenges, man, if you just like it, if you love the accuracy, if you like the cheese people, if you feel like a weapons master. 
Blaster or whatever, use it with just a red dot sight. It doesn't need a foregrip. The silencer nukes the range into oblivion. Extended mags, fast mags, none of that stuff is very practical. Just slap a red dot sight on it and use your other perp points for attachments or kill streaks or something like that. Well guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Or you can check out the previous episode, which is on what the mobility stat does on weapon variants. That one was a little bit mind-blowing. And the next one we're going to be talking about is another shorter in-depth episode on broken sniper rifle sights. They're, they're pretty messed up in this game. And then after the sniper rifle sights, we're going to be getting back on track with the weapon reviews with the uh, IMR, if I'm not mistaken. Drifter out.